To locate the acupuncture points on the forearm, you need to find the sun measurements. There are 12 sun, but the landmark in which they are taken from changes with each channel. Lung 9 to lung 5, pericardium 7 to pericardium 3, heart 7 to heart 3, large intestine 5 to large intestine 11, sanjiao 4 to the lateral epicondyle, small intestine 5 to small intestine 8. To divide the sun measurement on the forearm, you have your 12 sun, divided into half to find your 6 sun, divided into half again to find your 3 sun, divide them into 3 equal parts to find your individual sun measurements. There are 10 sun between Sanjel 10 and Sanjel 14. There are 15 sun on the medial aspect of the lower leg. We measure these 15 sun from the prominence of the medial malleolus to the tibiofemoral joint line. To locate the prominence of the medial malleolus, you must make sure that the foot is pointing forwards and that you are looking directly down so that you can see which part of the malleolus, the ankle bone, is most prominent. If no part of that malleolus is prominent, just take the center. The upper landmark for measuring sun on the medial side of the lower leg is the tibiofemoral joint line. To identify this, you will need to raise your model's leg and identify where the tibia and the femur meet. This is roughly at the same place as the medial aspect of the popliteal crease. If you lower the leg, this can be double checked against the inferior border of the patella. You can now divide these 15 sun into three lots of five sun and down to individual sun. There are 16 sun on the lateral aspect of the lower leg. We measure these 16 sun from the prominence of the lateral malleolus to the tibiofemoral joint line. To identify the prominence of the lateral malleolus, you must have the foot pointing directly forwards so that you can look down to see which part of the lateral ankle bone sticks out the most. If no part of that bone sticks out more, then just take the midpoint of the length of the bone. The upper landmark for measuring sun measurements on the lower leg is the tibiofemoral joint line. If you bend the leg, you should be able to palpate the joint between the femur and the tibia. This is roughly at the same level as the lateral aspect of the popliteal crease, and also approximately at the same level as the inferior border of the patella. Once you have established your 16 sun, you can then divide these in half to make eight, half again to make four, and then measure your individual sun. There are 16 sun between the popliteal crease and the prominence of the lateral malleolus. Using these two landmarks, you can break this space down into eight sun, four sun, two sun, and then individual sun measurements. Points on the upper lateral leg are found in relation to the prominence of the greater trochanter and the patella. To find the prominence of the greater trochanter, press in the hips on either side and feel for a bony protuberance. 
To double check this, this protuberance should move if you rock the foot from side to side. To locate the patella, you need to come down to the kneecap and find the bone of the kneecap itself. Be careful to palpate the superior board of the bone and not the patella ligament, which will take you higher up the leg. When palpating the inferior border of the patella, be careful not to come down to the inferior border of the fatty pouch that lies below the patella. There are 19 sun between the prominence of the greater trochanter and the inferior border of the patella. There are 17 sun between the prominence of the greater trochanter and the superior border of the patella. This means that the patella itself is too soon long. The distance between the greater trochanter and the inferior border of the patella is 19 sun. If you divide this distance into three equal units, each one of these units will be sixth and one third of a sun. There are 14 sun between the popliteal crease and the transverse gluteal fold. To locate points on the back, you need to be able to distinguish which are your vertebrae. In order to do this, you need to ask your patient to move up onto their elbows. Is that okay, Laurie? Great. Making sure this part of the back and shoulders are as flat as possible. And then going to ask Laurie to just drop his head down. And two prominent vertebrae are going to come into relief. So I'm then going to put my finger on what I think is the base of the neck and the start of the body. And the vertebra above it, which would be C6, so this would be what I think is C7 here, C6 above it, and T1 below it, the start of the body. So I'm then going to ask Laurie to turn his head slowly from side to side. When he's turning his head, he's moving his neck. So my fingers on C6 and C7 should be moving with the neck. And T1 part of the body should be staying as stationary as possible. That's great. By extending Laurie's neck, C6 should glide out the way and become impalpable. Thank you, Laurie, and just relax. When I'm quite sure which is C7, I'm going to keep my finger on the vertebra, palpate the gap underneath the vertebra, and ask Laurie to put his arms by his side and make himself comfy again. So, C7, T1. To locate T2 and T3, put your pen on the superior border of the spinous scapula. It will lead you between the spinous processes of T2 and T3. If you put the pen on top of the spinous scapula, it'll typically lead you between T3 and T4. When working on the sacrum, you need to first find the inferior border of L5, palpate down, look at the way the skin changes contour, palpate and you should come across a ridge, which is the start of the sacrum, if you actually palpate on the sacrum itself, it's solid bone. As you come off the sacrum, you feel muscle, not bone. To find the sacral foramen, if you put your fourth finger and your other fourth finger, one on L5 and the other on the sacral hiatus, and then put your fingers in between equally spaced. 
that gives you the approximate level of your sacral foramen. So this would be level of the first sacral foramen, the second sacral foramen, the third sacral foramen, and the fourth sacral foramen. Note as the sacral foramen go down, they go towards the midline slightly. When working on the back, you need to establish a lateral measurement. To do this, if you place your hand underneath the shoulder and ask the person to relax and bring the shoulder up, this brings the medial border of the scapula into relief. At the level of the spine of scapula, find the medial border and that gives you your three sun from the posterior midline. There are three sun from the glabella, which is in between the medial ends of the eyebrows, to the anterior hairline. There are twelve sun from the anterior hairline to the posterior hairline. There is one sun from the posterior hairline to the base of the occiput. To identify the base of the occiput, rock the head back very gently and feel for a curved bony protuberance. There are 14 sun from the centre of the glabella to the base of the occiput. In order to locate points in the lower abdomen, you need to mark up the sun. In order to do that, you need to make a connection with the person's body before going straight in onto the abdomen, preferably maybe something like the elbow. Then going in onto the abdomen not too fast and palpating down to the superior border of the symphysis pubis. Using the side of your hand, not your fingers, until you get to the top. So the superior border. The other parameter you need to look at is the middle of the umbilicus. You're going to divide that into five equal parts. In order to find points in the lower abdomen, you need to find the lateral border of rectus abdominis. In order to do this, you can ask the patient to lift their head. Can you lift your head for me? Perfect. And just relax. And could you lift your feet for me? That will also identify. And just relax the lateral border of that muscle. If that's your Forsen mark, if you find the centre of the umbilicus, which is going to be your midline, and come halfway from the lateral border of rectus abdominis, you'll get your Tusen mark. Go halfway again, and it'll give you your Onesen mark. Go halfway again, and it'll give you your Halfersen mark. Points on the upper abdomen are found in relation to points on the Wren channel. To find the points on the Wren channel, you need to divide the distance between the centre of the umbilicus and the xiphisternal synchondrosis into eight equal units. In order to find the xiphisternal synchondrosis, you need to feel up the lower border of the ribs until they meet, and you will find a nice notch in between the sternum and the xiphoid. This gives you your upper landmark. You can then divide the distance between this landmark and the umbilicus in half to give you four sun, again to give you two sun, and break it down into individual suns. The anterior hairline is an imaginary line drawn horizontally around the head on a level with the most anterior part of the hairline. If someone has a receding hairline, be sure to locate your head points in relation to the imaginary hairline. Following the real hairline may take you too posteriorly onto the head. Where someone has no hair, look for the change in skin texture to determine where the hair originally was. 
Many channels commence or terminate on nail points. Nail points are often described as approximately one fen or one tenth of a sun from the corner of the nail. The intention is to needle close to the bed of the nail but not into it. Feel for the flare of the base of the phalange you are working on. Your point needs to be distal to this. So nail points are located distal to the flare of the base of the distal phalange and just off the corner of the nail bed. Intercostal or rib spaces are numbered inferiorly to the rib number. So the first intercostal space is below the first rib, the second intercostal space below the second, and so on. The second intercostal space is typically the easiest to find. Place your finger on the sternal angle and move laterally until you fall into a dip. The nipple in a male is typically in the fourth intercostal space. The root of a woman's breast or a man's chest is typically in the fifth intercostal space. The last intercostal space palpable directly inferior to the nipple in a male is typically the eighth. The eleventh and twelfth ribs are free floating. That means that the anterior end of the rib is palpable and not connected to the anterior aspect of the rib cage. Start looking for the free end of the eleventh rib just superior to the level of the umbilicus, either on or anterior to the mid axillary line. The free end of the twelfth rib can be palpated posterior to the mid axillary line. The anterior end of the tenth rib can sometimes be mistaken for the free end of the eleventh. It may have a flat spatula-like end which is only lightly attached to the anterior aspect of the rib cage. It's always a good idea to step back from the body when locating ribs and put all these landmarks together before deciding which rib space is which.